Hey everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about the dark pool market summary dashboard uh, which you can go to by simply uh, clicking here and uh, we have uh, some pretty interesting uh, tools built on top of our dark pool data and uh, I'd love to spend some time going into this. So let's start with the market, da market dark flow uh, which is the most interesting one of these. So this uh, chart that we're seeing simply looks at uh, the dark pool flows every single day over the last uh, eight years and then it tries to chart the price of s p or spy uh, with that what we want to do is we want to see if there is any correlation here uh, because if there is then we can use that correlation to anticipate future price movements and uh, this uh, da these dark pool flows uh, come uh, not just from spy but from the entire market so we are looking at the dark pool data of the entire market to predict the price of SPY, QQQ, IWM uh, because the reasoning is if we are looking at the entire market then that might give us a better idea instead of just looking at SPY because a singular stock, uh, stock, stock pool data can be used for many reasons. So when we do that we get this chart. Uh, the bars are the actual dark pool flows but the, this yellow line is the moving average of the dark pool flows and when I say dark pool flows it's just the amount of dark pool every single day. And so with dark pool, the, the biggest issue is that we don't really know the direction of the dark pool trades, right? Uh, so uh, what we want to see is like, we want a correlation between spikes in the dark pool data and the price changes. Uh, we, we have no idea to anticipate whether a dark pool trade was a buy or a sell. There are some obviously things we do that we'll talk about when we actually talk about our dark, dark pool ticker uh, dashboard. But just for simplicity, let, let's assume that it's hard to anticipate whether a dark pool trade was bought or sold what we can do instead is just look at spikes in dark pool data and see if they correlate with different price movements and so i'll, I'll highlight the the one that's uh, I, i'll highlight the covid era because uh, when we got that huge dip during covid the dark pool data for the entire market kept going up and that was a pretty nice sign because that showed that obviously in retrospective not at that time that showed that that entire dark pool spike was actually a bullish sign in the market but that was just uh, one sample and that's where most people started to realize that spikes in dark pool data can cause significant changes in the market uh, can cause significant changes in the market and can also if you just look at the historical data can also help you predict what might happen next and so just looking at SPY versus the dark pool for the entire market, you will see very interesting correlations. So anytime uh, you will see that anytime we have a spike in the dark pool data or in the market dark flow, price actually goes up in the next couple of months. And obviously a really good example of that is the COVID lows. At the very lows, we had huge dark pool data coming in. Then uh, obviously a really good one uh, is actually right now for the last couple of months we have seen an increase in the dark pool uh, data. And although we had <laughs> gotten a dip, that increase in the dark pool data still suggests uh, that we do uh, get a small rally, which we actually have gotten uh, here as well. Still, it, it, it's a, a dip from 474 to about uh, 366, but we have recovered half of that and we're sitting at around uh, 412 right now. So uh, when dark pool data was increasing, what we were expecting was the price to not go too low because historically, anytime dark pool data had spikes, a spice price actually went up in the next couple of months. Really, uh, another good example is here. So anytime you see these gradual changes, the price doesn't go up uh, immediately in the next one or two months. But anytime you see these sudden spikes in the dark pool data, this is, a, this is another really good one. So you see this spike, the price uh, dipped in 2018 in December and November and you can see over the next couple of months it again rallied pretty nicely. So that's what we are trying to do here. We are trying to look at how historical spikes in dark pool data caused the price of the market or the SPY or the QQQ to change. And just based on this chart, uh, we have uh, observed that historical spikes often lead to uh, an increase in the price of the market or an increase in the price of S&P. That's an assumption we'll make when we are dealing with S&P. 
if we want to look at the dark pool data of individual stocks and see how their spikes correlate with their price uh, which is something that we'll see like very significantly so some stocks when there is a spike in their dark pool data they actually uh, go down but for others like let's say s p when we see a spike in their data or when we see a spike in the entire uh, sort of dark pool data for the entire market across all stocks then spike goes up so these are some correlations that we'll find when we actually go to the dark pool ticker dashboard but just sticking with s p we find that anytime there is a uh, spike or anytime the dark pool flows increase spy actually goes up in the next couple of months and this is a slightly longer term macro view it's not like uh, we are trying to predict what's going to happen tomorrow it's a longer multi-month view of the market that we are trying to predict and these uh, based on this chart based on where we are at uh, with, with our dark pool levels this is the distribution of what could be the move over the next week next couple of weeks next month or next quarter and uh, let's take a minute uh, to understand what we are seeing here so uh, on the left side is the probability of a move happening and on the x-axis is the percentage change that the move uh, might happen with so if we are saying minus two percentage with the probability of 0.12 that means there is a 12 percent chance that market might move a minus two percent down in the next five to seven days so that's an important point to understand let's take another example if there is let's say uh, for the monthly distribution we are saying that there is 0 0.04 which would be four percent because probability if you multiply by 100 then we get the percentage there is a four percent chance that the market will go down about five percent <laughs> And then there is about a 3.3% chance that the market will go up 5% in the next month. And so based on these charts, we are not trying to predict the exact move in the market. What we are trying to predict is the distribution of the moves. And the, the exact moves are very hard to predict, but trying to predict distributions, that is not as hard. And so the other uh, bars or these other lines are historical data points or historical times. So I believe this yellow is what were the dark pool levels or what was the distribution looking like when we were at the COVID lows or when we were during COVID when we had those uh, COVID lows. And you can see you can see that the short term, the distribution was skewed to the negative side and the change was negative. So we were anticipating uh, during those COVID lows, we were anticipating at least in a very short term, we were anticipating some more lows. But if you look at this yellow line here then in the long term quarterly or even monthly we had a lot more area under this yellow line on the positive side which is very very interesting because that is telling us that market might move down in the next couple of days but we are expecting a recovery in the next month or two and that is again important to know now at this point in time uh, when I'm ma making this video we can see that the white which is current is mostly is more leaning towards the negative side now, that doesn't mean the price is going to go down uh, obviously the, the quarter and the monthly distributions look pretty even out so actually the the quarterly is actually now uh, skewed to the positive side so again probably longer term we do uh, go up but shorter term you can see these distributions are slightly skewed <laughs> skewed towards the, the the left side and anytime something is skewed towards the left side that means that we are expecting a little bit of a dip in the market all right so how much of a recovery are we expecting one thing that i think i will clear this up more how much of a recovery are we expecting let's say on a quarter level so let's just look at this chart you can see that historically COVID lows, then after COVID, then what's the red one, then year to date. All of the distributions year to date, COVID lows, even after COVID, distributions at that time were expecting a much larger price increase on a quarterly level, which would mean on two to three month basis, than what we are expecting right now. So this white line is below, on the right side, this white line is below the 
yellow the purple the red line and that just means there is lower probability of a big move up on a quarterly basis and that is i think an important insight to have right and as we talked about these sort of weekly distributions and biweekly distributions are not that uh, highly significant because dark pool is uh, much better used to predict these longer term moves but these monthly and quarterly distributions are really useful even on the monthly level you can see that towards the right side of the chart most of the previous time periods year to date uh, covid not year to date here but especially covid so like we were expecting a much bigger jump during covid and then we are expecting right now despite being down uh, about 10 20% uh, year to date and so this like just looking at these four charts you get an idea that although we are not probably expecting a huge downturn huge downturn we are still expecting some downward pressure in the market just based on the dark pool data now you might ask uh, since we saw spikes and price went up why are these distributions looking like slightly uh, on the bearish side and that has to do with uh, the, how much uh, in the future i'll be looking so this spike and the price actually increased over the next couple of months not just in the next week so it went from like this low all the way let's say to here or even to here it, it took some time so since we are only looking at a slightly shorter term time frame still quarterly monthly we are still based on these charts we are still doing the same thing but we are looking at a shorter time frame and we are trying to anticipate that if we had an yearly expectation then we might have uh, we might have seen a slightly bigger move to the upside since these dark pool levels are higher but uh, i think we we, we can't uh, we, we don't want to go to the yearly level i think quarterly and monthly are good uh, charts to see so just keep an eye on these charts if some of these charts start skewing very far to the right then that just means that we are expecting like an upward trajectory from here or we are expecting a good uh, bounce or a good recovery in the market but if it is leaning more on the left side of the graph from zero onwards to the left then that means that there might be a chance that we are going to get another uh, small correction or another dip in the market so i just wanted to clarify these charts because they are some somewhat complex then obviously uh, easier uh, things next so then we have the dark pool trades which are filled off exchange so we don't know the direction of them and then we have the block trades which are filled on exchange so we do know whether they were filled at ask which would mean they were probably bought or filled at the bid which would mean they were probably sold position so we consider both block trades and dark pool trades in our dark pool data and we analyze both of them to gauge market direction or to um, build or create plays If you want to download all of this data, and if you are a subscriber, you can just click on the CSV button, and that will uh, let you download all of this data. Then we have some very basic statistics on which uh, stocks got the most dark pool uh, trades today, or the dark pool amount, which stocks had the highest change in terms of what they were today, what they were getting today versus what they uh, get on average in terms of dark pool flows, and so. these are uh, pretty uh, easy to understand charts we have the sector dark pool amount so similarly to how we have sector flows in sort of our overall market dashboard and in our options dashboard we also have sector flows from a dark pool perspective and then we have some very basic summary st- summary st- statistics on uh, each ticker and the total amount uh, in their uh, dark pool um, in the dark pool trades in their block trades how much is that changing and things like that but again uh, it's it's very easy and able to understand so i hope uh, that was uh, useful to everyone and I, i think the most uh, important uh, things to uh, explain here were the top two charts on the market dark flow and the distributions uh, i hope uh, these are useful to you these these are just another data point into your due diligence or into your research that that you can probably use if you have any uh, comments or questions please feel free to post them below uh, thank you again for watching this